Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a little mini series over Christmas 2022 and into early 2023 where I'm going to put this thing together as a VTOL craft, install it with a Matek F405 uh, VTOL flight controller, Ardu plane, quad plane and get it flying. Now this year in 2022 when I'm making this video has been a really interesting ride. I talked a couple of weeks ago about the fact that my first ever VTOL build that I started, well the idea of it kind of came about at the beginning of the year. We went through the whole thing. It's kind of kind of run its course. Uh, tilt rotors are very much the default builds in the hobby now and this just happens to be the one that you can make out of a Ranger T1, standard Ranger and the VTOL conversion kit. Now it isn't the cheapest way to get into VTOL. There are lots of other ways to do it now, including that jumper Zake 800 thing. I'll put a link down below if you want to go and have a look at that. That is a lot cheaper than building something like this. But there's a lot of fun to be had, particularly if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you kind of want a bit of a project in these cold, dark nights that we've got here in the depths of winter. Now, this video is going to be about how to install all of the hardware that comes in that VTOL conversion kit onto your Ranger. So if you've already done that, then check out the playlist down below. I'm going to then go through and set up the flight controller, do all the cabling, and then do the commissioning and maiden flight. But this one is just going to focus on how you get the nacelles installed, how you do the tail mod and everything else. Now I will go through this. There's a couple of ways you can install the tail. It looks by default in the kit that it's designed to have the ESC inside at the end of three long wires out to the motor. You could do it that way. Uh, I've seen people do it both ways. Myself, I've installed the ESC at the bottom of the tail here rather than do it the other way around, uh, but that's kind of personal choice. So let's have a quick look at what you get in the VTOL kit, just so if you haven't already embarked on this fun little project, what you get, and then I'll show you how to install the wing nacelles with the tilt bits and pieces and also the tail parts too. So before we open the packets I thought it'd be useful just to take a very quick look at what actually comes in the T1 PNP VTOL conversion pack. Now this is what this stuff was all in originally. I've taken it all out but let's have a very quick look at what you're going to get. First of all, you're going to get a 20 amp ESC. This is an additional one that we're going to need for the tail to run the rear tail motor. So that is handy to have with the cables that you're going to need to connect to it as well, uh, because the ones that come soldered to it, we're going to have to take off. Next thing we have then is the rear motor mount, a little, feels like a metal piece with all the associated screws in here as well. So that will go over the tail boom that has the extra pieces in it. The little bits in the middle, we'll get these out of the way once we've had a look. Uh, we have two millimeter banana connectors with some heat shrink. We're going to need those to connect the rear motor to the ESC as well and run the cables uh, around the boom and do that kind of cool stuff. So they need to be somewhere safe. The other thing on here as well are these couple of cables. Now these cables are going to replace uh, be used inside the body because the connectors at the side inside of the Ranger T1 that would normally go out to the LEDs they're going to be repurposed for the tilt servos so we're going to use these inside the body to connect those servos onto the flight controller to control the tilt of those front two motors. In the middle then we have the carbon fiber VTOL tail boom. There are some extra holes cut in this in various places. So it's very similar to the carbon fiber version that I looked at a little while ago. There were some kind of upgrades available, but this one has some extra little locating things uh, as well as uh, some holes for the cables to go through as well. Then we have the two motors for the front. These are different motors, so we're not going to use the same motors that are currently installed on the standard PMP VTOL. These are 1806 2000kV. These two are for the two forward nacelles. They're only 80 millimeters long, so you want to make sure you don't accidentally use one of these 
or the longer one in the wrong place. We're gonna to have to solder these onto the ESCs in place. All the screws that we're going to need are in the bags. Then the other motor that you get in here, same size motor, but has a significantly longer wire. This has a 250 millimeter wire. This is the rear motor that's gonna go on the motor mount on the rear prop and eventually be soldered onto the new ESC. Then along the bottom, we have two tilting servos. Uh, these have additional brackets and things to put them into the forward nacelles. Uh, these are reasonably heavy. They feel like they may be metal gear. Yep, they are. So they hopefully should be nice and robust. They're going to have to be. They're going to have to work hard for a living. Then we have the VTOL motor mounts. Both of these are here. There is a left and a right one. They are actually marked up with L and R on the pieces so you can't get them the wrong way around and there is the screws to put them together too and then finally we have a set of props these are gem fan long range 5126 two bladed props there's four in there we are going to need at least three of them and that means we're going to have one spare to go on the motors so now we've looked at all the different pieces, let's look at how we can build out one of the wings and which of these pieces we're going to need. So for the wings, we're going to need these four pieces, so have them handy. First thing we need to do is to take off the nacelle. Make a note of the letter that's underneath. We're going to need the same nacelle type, left or right, from the kit. Use the two screws at the bottom and two at the front Phillips head, and then the whole nacelle will just separate and come off and give you access to the connection to the ESC from the motor. Grab your soldering iron, and it's time to do a little bit of soldering. Undo those three connections. That nacelle and motor setup is now surplus to requirements put that in the spares bin next thing we need to do then is to start installing some other bits and pieces but before we do that let's take out the end of the connector at the end of the wing because in here there is a cable that goes to the led we don't want to use so we need to pluck out this cable that runs all the way down the wing to the led at the end and then we need to unplug it from the connector because this is where we're going to plug in the connector for the tilt and then unplug it from the LED at the end. If you just tug it, it'll pop out. Now we've got everything off, we can start putting things back on. First of all, we need to find the top and bottom of the new longer nacelle. It's gonna to go together like that over the wing, same kind of clamshell design, just a bit bigger. Just test fit that you have got the right one and that it fits because they are different. So this is the right set. And the other thing we're going to need to do here is install the motor. Now this is the replacement motor. So standard stuff is already pre-tinned at the end. We're just going to solder these three wires on to the ESC that we've just taken the other motor from. Top tip, I wouldn't install it this way I've done here, install it upside down and then it's gonna fit better. Now we need to install the tilt servo with the tilt mechanism. This piece here at the end that's free rotating needs to be towards the root of the wing. So find the top part of the nacelle and make sure just test for everything and everything goes together with the screws in the kit. Little black screws with blue Loctite on, you'll need a little Allen wrench to put it all together. Once it's together, it'll look something like this. It means that it's been held in place with metal going into metal of the actual servo, which is a nice way to do it. Pop everything in position, put the other side on and feed the motor cable through. And then again, use two of the little black screws and two silver Phillips head screws to put it back in place. Feed the wire for the servo through into the connector and push it home. That now means the connector, rather than having the LED connection, is now going to be used for us to control that tilt servo that we've just put in the wing. Top tip, you can use a lollipop stick to open up some of the channels if you're finding it hard to get all the cables in because some of them are a little bit tight. Next thing we need to do is finish making the cage for the motor. Just put everything out on the table and just test fit it's all going to work because once you put it out like this it's pretty obvious screw the plate into the back of the motor and i would recommend that while you're doing that screw the end piece on for the servo as well and then it's just a case 
of then pushing that over the output shaft of the servo and then using two of those same black screws to kind of put it into place. A very neat solution to give you a very, very precise tilting mechanism directly connected to the servo itself. Then, of course, you just have to do exactly the same for the other wing in the same way. So the orientation of the servo is going to be the same either way. But this is what it looks like. Also, like the fact, it has little graduations. The new nacelles are much, much bigger than the ones that you've taken off. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all works when we get there. So we'll hopefully get the other wing done and then we can do the tail. Now, in terms of the normal tail, putting it together is exactly the same as any other Ranger C1. The screws are all marked to put the tail together. So see my build for the original Ranger. More going to focus here rather than on the tail pieces on the VTOL extra bits because the tube that goes into the tail is a slightly different one. It's designed so that the wires can go through it into the body. So the bits we're going to need are the motor with the long wires and we're going to need the motor mount as well. It's going to go together like this with all of the same screws that we've used so far. So it kind of looks like it's going on uh, on like a little ring piece. Now this is going to slide over and sit just in front of the opening. Now we're going to need the ESC and the wires for this with the way that I'm going to put it together aren't quite long enough and I need to make sure that I'm mounting it with this side showing so that we get the maximum amount of cooling. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to extend the wires on here. But luckily, we have a couple of options. Now, I'm going to mount it probably about here so that it is underneath. And that means the wires can come around and up, go into the hole and into the chassis. Now, this is the cable that we took out for one of the LEDs, the wings. I'm going to snip the ends off, take out the red core and then twist it together. That's going to become my signal wire. So I'm going to solder into place. Now, there are two wires that I can solder onto the power connections from the ESC and that will do it as well. So with the signal stuff soldered into place, it looks like this. And then when I've soldered the wire extensions that came with the VTOL kit onto it, it's going to work. Now I need to cut off the wires from the motor and solder those onto the ESC. I've done it at this kind of weird angle because when I wrap it round, it's going to look nice and neat. So we can slide the whole assembly on just in front of the little cutout. And then that means that if we can turn it over and I haven't done it up completely properly here, I can use the 3D printed part, a little spacer with a cable tie to keep it in place. It's actually designed for two cable ties. So it looks like that. Nip those up and then I can pull the cable through one by one. And it looks like this. Not too gruesome to look at. Uh, not as neat as having it inside the body, but I prefer it this way. So we have the signal cable, we have the connector for the elevator, and we have the power wires for the ESC as well. So with those bits done, we are in a good shape. That's the tail kind of sorted out. Last thing to do, there's just a couple of parts left from that big pile of things that we started off at the beginning of the video. Now, if you have been following along with this, you probably only got two little bags left. This is one of them. The other one's probably going to be holding some propellers. Now, these are going to go into the empty connectors, or they were empty on this ready to fly here, that were designed for the LEDs, because we need to make sure that we have the ability to plug in the three connectors on each side. One of them is going to be used for the aileron, one of them is going to use for controlling the ESC for the motor, and the last one is going to be used for controlling the servo that we've installed now. So there's going to need to be three connections on either side. The aileron can be a Y cable, but we need these two individual wires here installed like this, and then we can have individual control over both throttles and both positions of the new tiltable VTOL parts. So that's everything installed from the kit. It's now ready to have the PDB pulled uh, that comes in it. We don't need that. The flight control that I'm going to use will do all of that for us. And also there's some other little tips and tricks to go through. But join me in the next video where we'll continue to build this thing. And hopefully for all of you that have been asking for this series, 
uh, this is going to be a fun one to watch. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.